Welcome to the Isaiah Bible Study. You have joined the online group, and I'm Debbie Stewart, Women's Minister at Green Acres Baptist Church in Tyler, Texas. And I want you to know that even though you are not here with us on site, I am very aware of your presence. And we are praying for you. We are thinking about you regularly. So here's how this is going to work. The Bible study will not be in a private online Facebook group. We're just going to post it so anyone can view the teaching video and be a part of the group. Every Wednesday, beginning February 1st, we will email you the teaching video for that week. And I'd love for you to post on our Green Acres Women Facebook page. You can post questions or comments. You can post your prayer requests, or you can email me directly. I can be reached at debbies at gabc.org. We would love to hear from you. We want to stay connected with you. We'll be using the workbook. It's entitled Isaiah, Striving Less and Trusting God More by Melissa. Melissa Spolstra. Uh, you're welcome to join the group without the study, the workbook, of course, but I want you to know that there's a lot of in-depth information, biblical uh, principles and application with that as well. And also each week, I'm going to give you principles from the book of Isaiah. So that's 66 chapters. Each week, you'll get eight biblical principles and applications. So you will know what does Isaiah have to do with me? What does the message of Isaiah have to do with my life? And we're going to unpack and uncover all of those things. So I'll be touching base with you weekly. I hope you'll touch base with us back. Thanks for joining the Isaiah Bible Study. Good morning, I'm Debbie Stewart, Women's Minister at Green Acres Baptist Church, and you are joining the Isaiah Bible Study, which is in Tyler, Texas. This is an eight-week study, and we're glad that you've come along with us. I hope that the variety of teaching from our author, Melissa Spolster, that's a new author to you if you've been running with us any length of time. She's a Lifeway author, and I'm excited to introduce her to you. But I, I hope that the teaching from Melissa in our workbook and in our teaching lessons, and then also my teaching will also be very comprehensive for you. Melissa is going to teach some uh, historical facts that we need to know, some biblical principles. One of the things I love, and especially today, uh, we get a little history. All you history buffs are going to love that today. Here's why that's important. Because we learn early on in the book of Isaiah where God's people were in their journey, how they got there, and how God wanted to move them forward. Sometimes the historical facts, here's where you are. It's important to know how you got there so you can figure out how you're moving on. So think about your life right now, where, where you are in your relationship with the Lord. Where are you in your journey with the Lord right now? For me, like I, I'm at a place, but I, I, I'm here, but I want to be here. So how am I going to get there? This study is a vehicle to get you from where you are to a place that I think God desires for you to be, to make some movement forward, to make some shifts uh, faster, to get uh, where the Lord wants you to be and maybe some areas in your life. So that's why we do this together. So you're going to love the lesson today to learn a little bit about the history. Let me also explain, please, why I do teaching each week. We'll have a teaching video by our author, but those are copyrighted. We have women joining us on an online study and viewing our videos. This is their Bible study in a lot of rural areas. COVID, thankfully, created that for us. Through our time of COVID, now we have women that have connected with us in our Bible studies in all but two states and 26 countries where they do not have Bible teaching and faith-based resources available to us. So I cannot show our author's material, but I want to try to teach Isaiah because we have women joining us from all over for an online study, and this will be a part of it. We have groups meeting. We have groups um, uh, in um, Plano, Texas. We have a group in Florida. We have a group in Shreveport, Louisiana. They meet in a home on Tuesday morning for Bible study time. So we're glad that you have joined us, and that's why we do these two levels of teaching. So striving less and trusting God more. I'll share with you what I've been striving about lately, and that's how to end this class with as many women as I started it with. That's what I'm striving <laughs> on right now. So the Lord has given us a good plan on how to do that. It's listed in your workbook. If you'll turn to page 7 in your workbook, I want to explain there are different levels of this study, and I'm going to ask you to pick one or at least try to travel along one and make a plan, make some decisions today. Today would be a line in the sand. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it my very best attempt. 
the bottom of page 7 gives you options for study. I'd love for you to read through those. I'm not going to read all of that to you, but let me explain it to you. The basic study is our first one. That means you go through your workbook, your five days of study, and you show up weekly for class. There will be some, reason, some women for health reasons and other reasons, they won't be able to be on site in class, but they are following along every day right along with us. And we're thrilled about that. So, so decide, are you going to do the basic study? Are going to do it every day and then be in class every week? Your answer to that is yes, ma'am. That's what I'll be doing. <laughs> Number two is you could do a more in-depth study. I've given you the Isaiah reading plan. If you want to do the daily work, we gather together weekly. And then if you want to read through the book of Isaiah, listen, if you've been running with us any length of time, we've done studies, book studies of God's Word together. And that's where I'm leading us. I want to get away from us trying to find a scripture of encouragement when we are in need. I want you to know God's Word. If you've been through it with us, we have studied Romans together. We have studied Galatians together. We have studied the book of Ephesians. We've studied the book of Psalms. Uh, the book of Numbers we have studied a lot in Proverbs. So we're, we're, we're learning um, God's overall book, his, this life map for us, and not just trying to pick a verse, okay? Because a verse a day is not going to keep the devil away, okay? So let's, <laughs> let's put our thinking caps on. Let's, like, dig in. A book of God's Word, what does it mean to you? You are going to be shocked, or at least I was, how relative the book of Isaiah. I always thought, Isaiah, you know, whatever, that's prophecy, that stuff. I don't know. He's talking about when Jesus was born and when he's coming back. I'm all good for it. I'm good with that. Uh, as I started unpacking Isaiah and the messages of Isaiah, I have been under conviction for weeks now about things in my life. So, so the in-depth study, if you want to add reading, there's 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah, and there's a good reading plan for that. Or number three is you might want to keep it simple. You might want to do three days of the work or, or not maybe do all five days. Here's, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you not to be consumed with how thick this workbook is. Day one, day two, day three, 66 books in Isaiah. I don't want you to think about that. Here's what I'd like you to think about. 20 minutes a day for the rest of your life. When I picked up this book, I thought, hmm, this is one of the thicker Bible studies I've ever taught. As a matter of fact, we were having a conversation in the van on the way to prison ministry uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I was telling the women, I said, listen, this is, whoo, this is a little in-depth study. Isaiah, like, it does not play. He is not playing. And I said, it, you know, it might be too much for some women. Come up here, Beth. And then my sweet friend, Beth Kennedy, was with us. And if you know Beth, you know how quiet, how reserved. She, does ha she has zero level of confrontation in her life at all with someone. And so we were sitting there. She was in front of me, uh, in, the, in the seat in front of me. And when I said, I'm a little concerned, you know, or women, this might be too much. And she said, excuse me for a moment. Can I say something about that? And I'm like... <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Tell them, because this, so, this, this spoke to me. Tell them what you said. You turned around, and this was shit to the, everybody in the van, is what she said. Well, I had prayed God revealed to me, which is a scary prayer, what, what needs to happen with me. And it was, if you can't do this much in Bible study, how can you spend this much on your phone and this much watching TV and this much doing this? So either you can do this, and it can strengthen and enrich your life, or you can waste your time and not gain anything by doing this. So this really isn't that much. That's what she said, Debbie. This is not too much. And, and she said, don't say that again. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. I thought you, and the, see, they clap. I just love this clap. I love that. I love how that spoke to me. She's right. It's not too much. Do you know that uh, in a 12-hour period of time, so I don't know, say 8 to 8, 7 to 7, whatever, 12 hours, you have 720 minutes. Hmm, 20 on the end of that. Hmm. So it keeps coming up. Then you have 720 minutes for the most part, the big chunk of your day. What I'm asking you to do in this challenge is you take 20 of those. You take that 20 off the 720 and you sit down with the Lord.
for 20 minutes. Don't worry about how many days you get through, how many chapters you get through. Let's just start with our daily work. I have already timed it. I've done three weeks of study already. I've timed it out for you. I know that if you read the daily, just the page day one, if you read through day one, I don't know, there are three or four pages to that. If you don't answer any of the questions, but you just read the important content, it will take you about 10 minutes just to read through day one without answering anything. If you read through day one, if you read through these days, and again, I've done 36 of them, I think, by this point. And you read through and you answer the scripture questions. Sometimes they're reflection questions you might need to think about and write down. But if you read through the daily content and you answer just the scripture, you look up the scripture questions, that's going to take you 20 minutes, uh, generally speaking, 20 minutes. If you do the whole day and answer all the questions and read the scripture, it will take about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, just depending on how quick you study and get through that. So I am agreeing with Beth, that's not too much. Of your 720 minutes a day that you have in the big chunk of your day, I know you have a lot of responsibilities, let's focus on, here's my Bible study method. It's going to be 20 minutes. I'm going to put a rhythm in my life. I'm going to put a pattern in my life. I'm going to put a practice in my life that I sit down for 20 minutes, and then you let the Lord take it from there. Let me tell you something. I have watched him honor over and over any movement forward you make toward him. He's going to honor that. Any step forward that you try to sit your behind down in a chair, I think the Lord is going to meet you there. Now listen, I'll say this too. The minute you decide to sit down with the Lord 20 minutes a day, the enemy's going to say, well, we will see about that. We will see all manners of craziness is about to happen. So you, you keep that commitment and you let the Lord help you to do that. Um, that. Here's what the word rhythm means. I loved this as we, as we get into this rhythm, this Bible study, this sitting down with the Lord every day. Rhythm means this, a strong and repeated action or movement. Let's get in a Bible study rhythm, a strong and repeated action or movement. So with that said, I think we've laid a strong foundation for where we're going. So let's get started with lesson one. You're in your Bibles with Isaiah chapter one. There are 66 books in the book of Isaiah, 66 chapters. And each week, this is one of the favorite parts that I'm going to love. Each week, I'm going to give you, at least Lord willing, this is what I'm attempting to do. I'm going to give you eight principles from eight chapters in Isaiah, okay? If there's 66 books and we're going to meet eight times, I divided that out. And if I give you eight principles or concepts or scriptures, every week you'll have a list of 66 principles or biblical concepts from the book of Isaiah at the end of our study together. You're welcome. I'm, I'm sorry. You're, you're welcome. Ha happy to do that for you. Listen. I need that in my life. I need to learn. So at the end, I can look back and see these are all of the high level. There's a lot of, lot of principles in Isaiah, but I've tried to look at each chapter and, and, and find the high level. What's our, what's our application? If I can find any action, what is the Lord asking you to do? What is the Lord asking us not to do? Um, what is an activity in my life maybe I need to be working on? So you have also on your... Um, table today, this application sheet. Anyone joining us online, you can get these uh, on our website. You can download these. You can download the schedule. You can download the handout for today as well. If you've registered online, we'll be emailing those to you. So when we're reading through Isaiah, reading through your sitting down, when you're sitting down for 20 minutes and you're reading through your workbook, keep this application sheet close by and ask the Lord some of these questions. Lord, is there a priority I need to change based on what I've learned today? Is there an attitude I need to adjust? And, and just ask the Lord. This will help you with your personal application. So as we're walking through Isaiah together, it's going to be profitable to you because 2 Timothy chapter 3 tells us that His Word is profitable to you. It's helpful to you. It's corrective to you and it's going to be encouraging to you. I usually pray Luke 24, 45 that says, open my mind to understand Scripture, that He could give you that. So we're going to kind of hit some highlights as we go. There are a couple of things you can be looking for as you're going through your daily work. Get in your mind, kind of put on that, your, your thinking cap, observe, that's an important Bible study term, observation. 
Observe what does this say? Ask who, what, when. That's what we're going to get from Melissa today. She answers all of that for us about Isaiah. Who, what, when, where, why, how. Define some of the words, some action words. Make notes of important words, things that are re- phrases that are repeated. Take note of some concepts, some phrases, and just, just jot these down in the side of your workbook. So just observation. What do you see? What's unfolding? And it's kind of like if there was an accident out here, we were all standing out in the parking lot and we saw an accident on the side of the road, uh, we would all observe something differently based on where we're standing at that moment. So God's Word will speak to you based on where you are in your experience. So observation. What does this say? What is Isaiah saying to me? The second is interpretation. What does it mean? If God says, I want you to return, I want you to repent, what exactly do you need to do? If He wants your life to be renewed and to be restored, if He's talking to you about social status and life priorities and other things in your life, we have to figure out, what does this mean to me? It's not enough for me to stand and teach God's Word. What does the Bible say? What does it say to you? What does this passage mean? What does it mean to you? Application will be important. So, Um, That's the next part. So we have observation, we have interpretation, what does it mean, and application. What do I do? What do I do next? I firmly believe that in class each week, there's going to be levels of application and levels of action steps the Lord's going to ask you to do. How does this line up in your life? What changes, adjustments? What shifts need to be made? What is the Lord asking you to do? What will your response be? To obey, to repent, to believe, to wait, to trust, to give, to go, to serve? Got to ask the Lord, what is my response? What am I going to do? So you've got a handout if you'll grab that. Let me do a quick overview and set us up with the first few chapters of Isaiah. Isaiah was written by the prophet Isaiah. Some parts have been determined written by Amos, but just throw that in there. But for the most part, Uh, It's written by Isaiah. Here's what's interesting to me about Isaiah writing this book. It's not about him. So Isaiah is not a biography about the prophet Isaiah. Not at all. Isaiah is a collection of messages that God told Isaiah to give to his people. In those people for those days for that time, but for these people this day and this time. It is still very pertinent. It is still very relative to where we are living in our culture today. You're going to see some of that play out. So it's not really about Isaiah at all. It's about you. It's an, and it's about um, decisions that we make in our life every day. Here's kind of an overview. Some of the details is that in those days, people had moved away from God. Their lifestyles moved them away from seeking God. Social status became very important to them. What people think about me, how I look, what I do, kind of a showy type thing. Materialistic uh, things were very important to them. And God's Word was not. Things in life became very important to these people. Things they liked, things they wanted to do, didn't want to do. If they didn't want to do it, they weren't going to do it. And and they just moved away from God. So Isaiah is calling them back. He's calling them back to God to repent. And he is sharing a message of salvation, how God, how, uh, Jesus, how Christ died for them. But he also talks a lot about being restored and being renewed. Over and over he tells the people this. So that message of salvation. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah contains prose, it contains poetry and prophecy. And I'm going to tell you another thing that I was a little shocked at that it contains. A lot of sarcasm. Like I don't, like I'm not a sarcastic person. Like I have to think about giving a sarcastic, or anybody like, some of you are just naturally sarcastic. I know you are. You're like, boom, you just think of something, that was good, that was good. My husband's like that. He'll just, he just comes up with something and goes, where did that come from? But I have to plan to be sarcastic. So I'm like, okay, next time she says it, I'm going to say this, and it's going to be sarcastic. I'm just not naturally that way. But Isaiah, the dude, is naturally sarcastic. I'm going to call it holy sarcasm. Here's one of the things. Here's one of the things we're going to get to. You are not going to like this. This is what we're going to get to soon. He, and uh, I forgot what chapter, but I do remember it's verse 20. He asked a question, or not question, this is what he says. 
in Isaiah we're about to get to. He says this, The bed you have made is too short to lie on, and the blankets are too narrow to cover you. Yeah. The bed that you made, yeah, you're like, (sighs) The bed that you made is too short to lie on, and your covers are too narrow to cover you. Oh, we're going to explain all of that in the days ahead. There's some things from Isaiah. So the first 39 chapters, um, theologians talk about how Isaiah is like a book within the book. The book of Isaiah is a book within the Bible as a book because it has 39 chapters that deal with the repentance factor and God... um, God calling Isaiah to help them to identify about changes and restoring. So first 39 chapters are like, y'all better stop doing this. You're going to get yourself in trouble. If you keep going this direction, God is going to bring your enemy in and there's going to be judgment. He's giving mercy, mercy, mercy. He talks a lot about judgment happens because of their choices. That's the first 39 chapters. And then, and, and there are 39 chapters in the Old Testament. And then the next 27 chapters are about hope or about forgiveness, about comfort, about a remnant. So that's kind of like the New Testament. So it's got 66 books, very much like God's Word has 66 books. However, we're going to see how the people in those days repeatedly ignored the warning of God. Red flashing lights that they are driving off a cliff. And see what their response is. So what does Isaiah have to do with you? What, What in the world does it have to do with you, your life? Here's what it's about. It's about rebellion and revival. It's about wisdom and warnings, rescue and redemption. It's about some very important defining moments. It's about some promises unclaimed, some self-serving behaviors, some choices, consequences, direct direction and opposition to that direction. Isaiah is going to talk about what what I'm going to refer to is Disastrous attachments. Disastrous attachments that they would not let go of. It's about judgment. It's about mercy. It's about miracles. It's about wandering. It's about waiting. It's about wanting. Discontent and disobedience. And it's important to know um, how they got to those disastrous attachments which caused them disastrous circumstances. And what God used to get them back and what they did next. Isaiah identifies several problem areas in their life. First and foremost is they had a form of godliness, but their hearts were far from the Lord. They had religious activities. They had religious ceremonies. They, like in our times today, it would be like you come to church on Sunday morning and you sing. And you open God's Word on Sunday morning, but you never worship Him during the week, and you never sit down and open His Word during the week. That you show up on Sunday to do some activities, but those don't carry you through the rest of the week. You sing and worship and look at God's Word on Sunday, and that's what they did. They had religious activity, but they would not listen to the Lord. Isaiah encourages the people how to have strong faith. He tells them how. We're going to get to that on a personal level. He challenges them to godly behavior. They make choices, and there are consequences. He is faithful to proclaim God's truth. He is forceful at times, and I'm going to try to do the same. As you read and study and listen, ask the Lord to speak to you about this message. On the contents page of your workbook, it's broken up, Isaiah and the chapters in your workbook are broken up into six categories. I believe that's on page um, three. Thank you. You know the study's going to be good when you get something out of the contents page. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. It's on the contents page. It's broken up into, just notice that quickly, God's character. This is how we're going to walk through this. This is going to be our little timeline. God's character, God's calendar. We're going to trust God's comfort. Trust God's commands, trust God's correction, and trust God's coming. The, the, the study is broken up into those six categories that are going to be helpful to us. Here's what Spurgeon says about Isaiah and the people in those days. 
The people in Isaiah's day were both drunk with wine and drunk with pride. They were intoxicated with themselves. So in uh, Isaiah chapter 1, I've just listed, we don't, for the sake of time, we won't have time to go over these, but I've listed them on your page, highlighted some of the main points or principles from the first eight chapters. But I want to read a po portion to you from Isaiah chapter 1. The highlight for us in chapter 1 is going to be verse 10, which says, Hear the word of the Lord and listen to the instruction. That's the foundation that I want to lay. One passage says, or one translation says, Come and listen. So today, check. Number one, you came. Check. You, you showed up. Come and listen and learn. Uh, let me read this part from Isaiah chapter 1. I want to read it from ESV. Uh, verse 18 in ESV says this, Come now, let us reason together. Have you, you remember hearing that scripture before? Did you realize that was from Isaiah? Come now, now. Listen, that in itself are two important words. Come now. If you have little children, you, you know how important those two words are. Uh, we uh, Keeping our grandkids not long ago, they kind of live out in the in the country area and there are not many cars coming down the road but we were outside playing and and my little Luke had started down the road and we were about to take a walk down that road when I saw the FedEx truck coming which he told me comes to his house every day it comes to his house every day okay that's good information to know tell your daddy dad okay dad. no the FedEx truck she and my, my Amazon Prime everybody you get your Amazon Prime okay so so he's not paying attention to the truck and he starts running and immediately that's kind of what I say to him Luke come come here now come here now he's he doesn't see the thing that could be very disastrous to him I see it because I'm I'm a different perspective I'm seeing from a different come now oh, it means do not argue this is not up for negotiation I need you to come now. Why? To keep him safe. To protect him. Why? Because I'm crazy about him. Because I love him. It's not because he's in trouble or has done something wrong. But the Bible is saying, come now. Now is the time. You don't see what's coming. I believe we're in a day, we're in an age. And as well, we unfold Isaiah. You're going to see it playing out in political realms, in cultural realms, in our society. Because there's some things coming. The Bible talks about that in the last days. And I believe we're in the beginning of those. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you... Would everybody say that, please? If you... Please understand this is a contingent verse. If you, if you write in your Bible, I hope you do, make it a workbook or what, like you should circle, if you. In my Bible, it says if you, if you, and then I put a comment there said Debbie. If you, Debbie, if you, I can't do this for anybody else. I can only do this for me. If you are willing and obedient, okay, there's your two action words. If we're doing observation, if we're doing interpretation, that for my Bible and my journal, that gets two lines underlined because those are your action. So think of like maybe diagramming sentences. I love diagramming sentences. <gasps> Some of y'all are going, I'd really, really like the history part of that. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken about this. We're going to see what happens. If you are willing, and, you're going to be one of the two, th you're going to find yourself in one of two categories. You're going to be willing and obedient or you're going to rebel and refuse. And you can say, I'm not picking either one of those. I'm just going to hang out here and quiet quit and just kind of, just. I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm just going to be right here left alone. Okay, that is by default, refuse. That's rebelling. That's refusing. You're going to do one of two things, willing and obedient, and, and you will eat the good of the land or refuse and rebel. And the Lord will bring you back to him through disastrous measures, and we're going to see that play out. So that's an important part of Isaiah chapter 1. I think that kind of hits the high level of where a lot of this is going in Isaiah, but I also listed verse 10. Hear the word, word of the Lord 
and listen to the instruction of our God. So our action words are going to be willing and obey, listen, pay attention. Over and over in chapter 1, he says, turn to me, turn to me, which gives the indication you're going the wrong direction. Turn. And one place in Isaiah chapter 1, he says that they have put themselves away from him, that by their own actions, they put themselves. I, I, I would just be brokenhearted if one of my grandchildren decided to put themselves away from me as if, I don't want to be with you. I don't want to be near you. That would just be brokenhearted. But I see this over and over as we walk through Isaiah. You're going to see this. Here's one of the things that just broke my heart about what was happening. Uh, they didn't notice the Lord. The Bible talks about, about that. They paid zero attention. And when it all boils down, they could care less about Him. They did not love Him. They said that they did. But the Bible says your actions prove otherwise. And that just hit me between the lines. I don't want to just say, I love Jesus, I love God, I love church, I love God, when my actions say something completely different. If you love Him, you'll want to know Him. I love my grandkids. I can't wait to spend time with them. So as we move on to chapter 2, one of the highlight um, principles from chapter 2 is verse 3. The Bible says that He will teach us His ways so that, if you've been with us for a while, you know that those two words, you've got to circle those, so that are two important words when God speaks. He will teach us His ways so that we may obey Him. He's not going to throw you out there and say, figure this out. Figure out what I want you to do. Figure out my will for your life. You're just going to have to, you know, go it on your own. He says, I'm going to teach you in the situation that you're in so that you can obey me. He gives you everything you need to do that. When we move on to chapter 3, the highlighted concept is this. Their actions, their behavior, God says was self-serving. It was selfish. It was prideful. It was self-centered and arrogant. Those are right off the pages of His Word. Verse 9b says this. They have brought about their own destruction. I have watched people in my family self-sabotage their life to the point of losing their life. They are no longer alive as a result of their rebellion and self-sabotage. It doesn't have to be that way. Chapter 4, your highlighted concept is this, verses 2 through 6. I'm paraphrasing those four verses. That's, those are important verses. But the, uh, here's the paraphrased version. God judges them but makes a promise of restoration. Judgment comes in their life. Consequences from their choices come. But all the while, the Lord does that in love. He does that with His desire to restore. And He talks about a remnant. Melissa will explain a lot of that to us. Uh, a remnant unlike what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah. He wiped out Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sin. But when these people are our, our judge when God brings judgment in their life because of their sin, He leaves this remnant that will continue to follow Him. As we move forward to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 12, if you'll notice verse 12, this is the latter part. I mentioned this earlier. But the Bible says, You never think about the Lord or notice what He is doing. He said of them in that, those days, They... Don't even notice what I'm doing. They don't recognize my activity in their life, nor are they recognizing the enemy's activity in their life. They are just consumed with doing what they want to do. Their own activity is all they were concerned with. But he said, they don't notice me. They don't love me, and they don't pay attention to what I'm doing. This Bible study is getting us to the place where we're going to pay attention to what God is doing. It will help us to avoid errors, mindsets, and activity of the Israelites. Some of those things you'll easily recognize when we want to be sure we don't have those mindsets. Chapter 6, the highlight verses, verse 8. Let me just read that. We'll have to move quickly and we'll wrap this up. Isaiah chapter 6. You might remember this story. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And He was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of His robe filled the temple. Hovering around were mighty seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, 
and with the remaining two they flew. In a great chorus they sang, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. Well, well, do tell, did we not sing that this morning before we started this whole thing? The whole earth is filled with His glory. The glorious singing shook the temple to its foundation and the entire sanctuary was filled with smoke. Then I said, my destruction is sealed for I'm a sinful man and a member of a sinful race. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And Isaiah thought, since he, when he said, I saw the Lord, he thought he was going to have to die as a result of that. Then one of the seraphim flew over to the altar and picked up a burning coal with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, the coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to my people? Who will go for us? And I said, Lord, here am I. Send me. And he said, Yes, Lord, I will go. I believe some are going to be hearing that throughout our study. Whom should I send? Who will go? Chapter 7, as we wrap up, verse 9 was so important. I've written this out right by my computer as a reminder to me. This is one of those daily reminders we need. If you are not firm in your faith, if you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. This translation says, if you are not firm in your faith, you will not be firm at all. But I love ESV. If you do not stand firm in your faith, there's a day coming. We're going to have to be standing firm in our faith. And closing with Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah reminds the people, do not blame God for your self-induced problems. Remember Jonah? The Lord gave him an assignment, but he didn't listen. He wanted to do his own thing. And he created his own storm. Can't... Some storms the Lord allows us to enter into for reasons that He may or may not explain this side of heaven. But Jonah, several other people created their own storm, as did the Israelites. We can't blame God for self-induced problems. And he talks a lot in chapter 8 about shattered, about how God brought a shattering when, when they were shattered. And this is the definition when I looked it up, to be shattered. I have been at a place in my life where I felt shattered my dreams were shattered. My life was shattered to pieces. It means to lose courage by the pressure of sudden fear. To lose courage. God's Word says that He will make you brave and He will give you courage. There are a couple of times in God's Word, especially in Acts, where He says, He doesn't say, I'm going to give you courage. He says, you need to take courage. Some of our hands are already full with so many other things we don't have a hand to take courage with. So we're going to have to let some things fall over these next few weeks together so that we can receive what the Lord has for us through the book of Isaiah. Glad you joined us online today. I hope you'll follow along in the next seven weeks. More to come.